Basic. Basic. Simple. Simple. Not crazy. Not crazy. No tube fronts. No tube fronts. Maybe a V10 or two. Maybe two V10s. And a turbo. And two turbos. Or 17. has the VLSD, you gotta get rid of that too. Even if it has, okay, like if you have a VLSD and you drift it and you're sliding it, it'll work fine if you're just doing one corner. As soon as you try to transition in it from side to side, it's gonna open up and exit open diff. Yeah, that's, no uh, I definitely run into that sometimes. Yeah, and then you're gonna be like, what the hell? Like, yeah. You're gonna think it's driver error, but it's really the diff screwing you over. It can be done, don't get me wrong. But if you're trying to do something to start, the welded diff is the way to go. Pull that thing out, pop the cover off, spray it with brake clean. You have to like sit. really, really clean that thing. Yeah, like, and you gotta let it sit overnight. Yeah. Don't weld it right after you break things because that causes an incredibly deadly poison yeah. that will kill you. Quick tip, it will kill you. Yeah. If you vaporize brake cleaner, you'll die. It'll get you real sick. For real. So don't so do yeah, it. pull the diff out. I mean, if you don't have a welder, I mean, you know, just find a fabricator, find someone yeah. to weld it. There are people them, around me that'll do it for like 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah just do that. Yeah. And then have them weld the plate on both sides of the spider gears. Just It's just, you know, you don't want that to open up. I mean, I trust the welds, but you know, you don't want it to open up no matter what. If it so was, it, do break in the middle of a drift. You'll die. Like, yeah, <laughs> you feel like that's like a lot. Or if you're driving on the highway, you <laughs> merge around the exit, thing opens up, whoa, you're getting wrecked. <laughs> You're one event in, two events in, and you're, and you're starting to feel it. But like the diff and the trans is all you're gonna need. I mean, it's so simple. Yeah, your car's gonna feel like a bow, it's gonna have a lot of roll. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you can get out there and have a good time with, just an, with a welded diff, you'll be fine. So Juan, do I need to get my transmission rebuilt and get all my gears shot peened? If you don't have um, straight cut gears, uh, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, you're, you just can't drift. You need a built trans with straight cut gears. <laughs> or you're screwed, man. Oh, R154. Uh, is, yeah. which is, you know, it's required for drifting, actually. It's part of tech inspection in a lot of tracks. If you don't have an R154, a lot of tracks will kick you out. Yeah, you're, you're just going to go home. No, we're lying. You just That's definitely a stock transmission. But, uh, I mean, you've been drifting this car for how long now? Yeah, we drift, we've done... We did... Uh, Five, six second events year. this year. This is the second full year. You completed two years. Well, in this car. Oh, the, yeah. the coupe had four events. But this car, the trans is, I can bang years from third to second and it'll stay. But yeah, I mean, the, the five-speed trans should be fine. And I guess one thing that would really help in terms of not drifting, but in terms of maintaining your car in that sense is getting rid of your emissions. Oh yeah. It's not it's not a power increase for me. I mean maybe some parasitic shit, but it's not gonna it's not gonna make your car feel like it has a an SR in it. But it, it makes the engine bay cleaner. And when you're drifting your car is really taking up a, a lot of abuse, man. And the less stuff that there is to break, the happier you're gonna be. And uh, the emission stuff he's talking about is basically everything under here. Everything under there, other than the IECV. There's a lot of guys who know how to do it. Like it's totally worth it. Yeah, um, and like you said, you're not going to really gain any horsepower, but you're going to release some, I guess you could say. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Yeah, but uh, more importantly, you'll get like some really your throttle response will be good. 
when you have an issue, you know it's not the 10,000 vacuum lines that are behind the head because yeah. you're not going to be and there And the coolant anymore. lines that'll break too. Yeah, and the coolant lines that are going to break. So the intake manifold, as for my car and, and Juan's car are pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing I've got on here is ICV, and he's got the same thing. I have it too, yeah. And uh, even, the, even the lines that, the coolant lines that go under your throttle body, yeah. you don't really need them. They're nope. just there if you live the in like, winter. yeah, Alaska, which... I guess if you live in Alaska, then keep them, but... Yeah, we kind of live in Alaska right now. I mean, it was cold yesterday. But yeah, I, you, can, you can get rid of your ICV, but if I didn't want my car to idle at two grand, that's just me, you know? Personal preference. Kill me! Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a good thing to have. Especially if you're going to daily the car. Just clean it and put it back in and you can call it a day. Yeah. So what else you got on here? We've been through, you've got a welded right. diff. So let's run through the story. So you, you've, you've hit one, two, three events with your welded diff and your trends and you're, you're linking the track kind of, you're feeling comfortable holding the wheel, you're not sitting there between none of this, none of these numbers, you know, you're not doing anything crazy and you're, you're being controlled. So now you feel like that roll is starting to really bother you or you feel some slop in the back of your car that's really screwing with you. Now it's time to play the suspension a little bit. It's got a sloppy booty. It's got a sloppy booty. You gotta tighten the booty up. Give her some, uh, give her some CrossFit. Do some squats. So I'm not saying go and buy some squats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying go and buy fortune armor coils. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of good shit that you can get for you know, eight, nine hundred dollars and less. So what do you have on this car? Cut I got it. <laughs> yeah. so it came with it's it, got some high performance cut coils, springs. And I got it down to five with some serious, <laughs> some serious finagling. Yeah, but I got D Max, um, D Max Super Streets. They're tight. And these are camber adjustable, dampening adjustable. Kilo. Yeah, I remember when I had just started drifting and I had the coupe. I started out, you know, dicking on an exit ramp and it was fun and all. That's and currently the, street, is... the streets is not the way to go, man. The track is where you're really gonna learn how to drive. You don't have the pressure of crashing. Hit crashing. You don't have the pressure of hitting shit or of the um, of the fuzz getting on you. So you go to the track. But I asked Nick and he was like, dude, get some D Max. I was like, what's D Max? He's like, they haven't really been out yet. This was back in like 2013. And I, and I uh, hit up Cunha from GTR Garage and I hadn't moved in a while. And they're tight, man. I haven't, I've, you know, beat the crap out of them for a while. So you've been drifting on these for two years now? These coils, have, yeah, these have been for two years. And uh, they're not blown, nothing like that. Well, you, they're still holding the wheel up. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they're still holding the wheel up, they're pretty good, yeah. They feel great. I have them on the stiffest setting, no problems at all. But yeah, what I'm, the point is like, you can buy some BCs, feel, whatever. You don't need to have some super high-end coils. You can buy some ISR coils from someone that... You can buy some ISR coils, which is gonna be the plan for the coupe now. ISR coils are tight. You can get some of those. What is it, like 800 bucks? 800 bucks. 800 bucks. Point is, get yourself some budget friendly coils, slap them on, and your car is gonna feel completely different. Alright, the next thing I recommend buying, once you buy your coils and your diff, is a seat. Yeah. Okay. Buy a seat and buy, a, buy the best seat that you can afford. The reason you want to see this is because if you've ever been in a car that's been sliding, there's a whole lot of force is making you want to not stay in your seat. Right. And if, as you're trying to, you know, finagle your wheel, and your ass is doing the salsa, <laughs> you're just not going to have a good time. Uh, do they check your seat when you go to your truck? They, okay, as far as tech goes, it's All not, right. they're not going to be like, dang, you got a fake bribe. No. They're going to grab your seat and they're going to shake it with all their might trying to get that thing out of there, just for your seat bolts and shit, just make sure they're tight. But uh, no, they're not gonna like, tech your seat in that, in that sense. But I wouldn't, also wouldn't buy super crummy seat because if you get in an accident, you really don't want to get like split in two and yeah. have it crush you. So, so that's why I'm saying buy the best seat that you can get. If you it's do- It's just a matter of, you know, you're putting your life in the car. You don't want to do anything too silly. And die. And die. Uh, Thanks, dude. You can't drift if you're dead, you know. But if you do, if you do cheap out and get uh, like a replica bride seat or something, get the get the fixed seat. Don't get the reclinable oh, yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Because uh, if you crash in a fixed seat or a reclinable seat, you're probably gonna break it and hurt yourself. It's gonna turn you into like a peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Sandwich. Buy a 
oil pressure gauge and a water tank. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Don't trust that stupid little sender to save your engine and don't trust the stock water temp thing. Just don't do it. Guess who has been through like three KAs because he trusted that? You. Yeah. <laughs> So quick rundown to recap everything. We're talking about you're buying a 240 for how much? Like, I think you can get one and a half to three. So we'll we'll do two thousand just to keep it in the middle. In the middle. So you got a two thousand dollar car, eight hundred dollar coils. You're twenty eight hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got coils, rock them. Yeah. What I'm saying is you don't need your car doesn't require coilovers to go slide. Your diff, your welding for fifty bucks or for free. Uh, <clears throat> what else? You can buy our friend chicken nuggets and he'll do it. You can buy our friend chicken nuggets and he'll always do it. Yeah, I would do it for chicken nuggets. I would do it for chicken nuggets. <laughs> okay. 2850, 2875, because you buy, buy $25 worth of hose and plugs for your manifold. Gotta buy some hose. Gotta buy some hose. 300 bucks for CDs, because 500 bucks is getting into like, you could probably buy a price. Yeah, you, can you can definitely buy it. Yeah. So 300 bucks, just get like a used seat. You can get like a nice used seat for yeah. 300 bucks actually. Or you can go on eBay and get a fake seat for the same price. There, there are good fake seats out there. Just like there's terrible fake seats. But if you're gonna get fake seats, don't die. Don't die. And I didn't tell you to do it either. So. It didn't tell you. Three, three, three grand. Three grand, and you've got a drift car. Including the car. What else would have the car that we I'm just gonna go this. Dude, dude, that was so You almost got tapped. Holy shit. <laughs>